recording in the cloud. I think we're ready to admit. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to tonight's virtual candlelight vigil at United Church of Ferndale in Ferndale, Washington. Tonight's event is part of a nationwide movement called Morning into Unity, supported by the nonprofit organization Reimagine which is on a mission to transform our cultural attitudes towards death, grieving, and living. Reimagine believes, as we will experience over the next hour, that in facing death, impermanence, and grief, we actually become more connected to one another, to ourselves, and to what matters most. Tonight, in houses of worship and other spaces across America, there are vigils like this taking place where people of all faiths and no faith are invited to come together to mourn our losses and join in our humanity to pray for unity. My name is Zubin Desai of Reimagine. I'm here to be your online guide this evening. The vigil will begin in just a few moments. First things first, let's get acclimated to Zoom. There's a chat button on the bottom right. Tonight, we will be using that space for two purposes. One, for us as moderators to share instructions and prayers for you as the service goes on. And two, as a sacred place of honor for you at special moments, we will invite you to share words and names that matter to you. Next, moving right to left is a camera icon that turns on and off your video. We suggest you turn it on. If your video connection is buffering, stop your video and or use the phone number to call in with your phone. Finally, there's a microphone to turn on and off your voice. Do that. Note that your audio will be muted until the optional breakout session at the end. Unmute your phone at that time in the breakout room, press star six. Now, if you don't have your candle ready, please go get one. So here we are, and I want you to know how tonight's program will unfold. As you can all see from the program, the rest of our time together will include prayers, readings, a special candle lighting ceremony, and remembrances, honoring what and who is in your hearts and minds. We will conclude the ceremony with an invitation for a collective action and with the option of staying on for the small group breakouts that we call unity circles for really a special time together. So now we'll pass it on to Pastor Bobby. Welcome. Welcome to the Morning into Unity. I am the Reverend Bobby Virta, pastor here at United Church of Ferndale, the United Church of Christ and the United Methodist congregation. I would like to begin by acknowledging that we are gathered today on the ancestral homelands of the Coast Salish people who have lived in the Salish Sea Basin throughout the San Juan Islands and the North Cascade watersheds from time immemorial. Please join me in expressing our deepest respect and gratitude for indigenous neighbors, the Lummi Nation and the Nooksack tribe for their enduring care and protection of our shared lands and waterways. And on behalf of all of us gathered here, we welcome you. Both you who are with us in person, helping us to film, for those of you who are in your cars, for those of you who are online, and for those of you who are joining us on Facebook Live. We are all united in a common purpose, one in mind and one in heart. So we encourage everyone, especially those of us who are with us here today virtually, 
to participate fully in both word and action. Please know that no matter who you are, no matter where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. I invite people to remember to stay in your cars, to stay socially distanced, and if you are needing to be close than that, to have your mask on. I have my mask off on my chin just so that you can hear me. Among us tonight are representatives online from many communities and including our interfaith brothers and sisters from a variety of houses of worship throughout Whatcom County, across the state of Washington and across our nation. So what other communities or groups are represented here this evening? If you are on Facebook Live or on Zoom, I invite you to name those either in the chat or in the comments. And I know that the people who are gathered here in your cars are from this faith community. So thank you for being here today. A few weeks ago, the death toll from the coronavirus pandemic in the United States passed 200,000. The number of positive cases of COVID-19 continues to rise across our nation and here in Whatcom County. Fires have burned sacred lands. Livelihood and homes in California, Oregon, and in Washington State have been burned and destroyed. Family businesses have closed. Ruth Bader Ginsburg has died. People are dying on the streets and in their homes. We have had a murder here in Whatcom County just last night. The murder of Breonna Taylor has had no one charged. The amount of grief that we have processed seems insurmountable. We mourn the loss of confidence and silence. We mourn the deaths from coronavirus and COVID-19 and coronavirus and the destructions from hurricanes and wildfires. We mourn for the unity of our people in the midst of this crisis. We mourn for all those who live in a world that sees the color of their skin as a threat. We mourn for the victims of violence, not only on the streets, but also in the halls of our government and in people's private homes. We mourn the death of businesses that provided livelihoods for many of us. We mourn because so much of what we call normal is gone. In the midst of so much loss and pain, we have gathered to declare our hope for something better and our own personal commitment to making it possible. Yet, hope does not lessen the need to grieve so my friends, it's okay to cry out. It's okay to yell. It's okay to throw up your hands and or fall on your knees in grief. This evening, we have come together to acknowledge our grief. Across the country right now, in Kenosha and Chicago, from California to Maine, from Washington State to Washington, D.C., and every place in between. People are gathered at churches and synagogues and mosques, all part of a national mourning into unity movement. In our grief, we are not alone. We are in this together. We mourn in solidarity with others of faith, and we rejoice. As different as our traditions may be, we are yet one 
human species. Next week, we will gather again in this same platform on Zoom, on Facebook Live, and here in the church parking lot. And then we will focus on hope. This evening, though, we have gathered to grieve. Please pray with me. O oh God, our comfort and our strength, our help in the midst of trouble and our hope in the midst of despair, we come before you weighed down by mouths, months and months of pain and years of struggle. Please give us the courage to face the tragedies that overwhelm us and the wisdom to name them with their true names and strengthen the bonds between us that we might hold one another in our grief, encourage one another in our hope, and support one another in our commitment to a world healed and made new. And let the people together, no matter how you are with us this evening, say together, Amen. The text I'm about to read to you comes to us from the Hebrew scriptures. These words come to us from the prophet Jeremiah, who grieved 2,600 years ago for what had become of his people. And tonight, we are collectively here to acknowledge the suffering of our people living around the world. Hear the words of the prophet Jeremiah to his people and to us from Lamentations verse, chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, 6 through 7a. How lonely sits the city that once was full of people. How like a widow she has become. She that was great among the nations. She that was a princess among the provinces has become a vessel. She weeps bitterly in the night with tears on her cheeks. Among all of her lovers, she has no one to comfort her. All of her friends have dealt treacherously with her. They have become her enemies. From daughter Zion has now departed all her majesty. Her princes have become like stags that find no pasture. They fled without strength before the pursuer. Jerusalem remembers in the days of her reflection and wandering all the precious things that were hers in days of old. Here ends the reading. And I offer you these words that have come to us from the Apostle Paul in a letter that he wrote the first generation of Christians in the city of Corinth. He writes about how easy it is to fall into despair, about how faith and community can keep a person strong. Hear the words of Paul to his people, then and to us today. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 8 through 11a. We do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, of the affliction we experienced in Asia. For we were so utterly, unbearably crushed that we despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt that we had received the sentence of death so that we would rely not on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. He who rescued us from the dead, deadly peril will continue to rescue us. On God, we have set our hope, and God will rescue us again, as you also join in helping us by your prayers. And this is the reading, the epistle according to Paul. And finally, I offer you these sacred words from the Holy Quran, 2, 155 through 7. 
we will test you through fear, hunger, loss of life, property, and plants. Give glad tidings to the patients. Those who respond to life's crisis and calamities with saying, surely we are God's servants and to God is our return. There are true recipients of God's blessings and benevolence and they are rightly guarded. Here is this reading. It is said, friends, that it is better to light one candle than to curse in the darkness. It's not always easy to light a candle. This evening, we who are physically gathered and we who are gathered online light many candles against the darkness. Whether you are with us in person or online, please light a candle now and trust even in the midst of the darkest grief, there is light. Let us light our candles. And if you are in a car, you're also welcome to turn on your lights in the car. Let us fill the world with light. While I recite the morning into unity candle lighting blessing, I invite you to hold your candles outstretched for all to see and then connect your eyes with others in the space, whether online or in person. And if you are in a car, make eye contact with someone in a car next to you. By lighting our candles in this time of pandemic, we mourn the dead. We know who those people are. Those in our own community who have died of COVID-19. And there are those that we don't know. The ones killed by racism. The ones who died alone held in their last minutes only by the holy presence of God. Those who died alone in hospitals without the beloved family surrounding them. Even as we mourn the dead, we honor and pledge our unity with the living. We honor and pledge our unity for the living in our country. For those who live around the globe on our pretty planet, and for all of us who are still here. Let us now call to mind all we grieve, all we mourn. Take the time to name it. If you're in your cars and you're the only person there, say it out loud anyway. If you're in your cars or online, say it so that someone around you can hear. Let us speak their names. I'm remembering Virginia. I'm remembering Dorothy. And if you are on, with us online, please type into the chat all that rises in your mind, in your heart, so that the rest of us may join you in your prayer. Remembering a friend, Layla, who lost her life to cancer. In silence, let us remember the darkest days of COVID crisis. Let us remember our fear and our isolation and our pain
and let us now speak out loud what those days were like or type it into the chat. We are continuing to remember Brianna Taylor, George Floyd, and so many who have been murdered. And let us all say together from the depths of our heart, we remember and we mourn. And in silence, let us remember the people who suffered the ravages of the virus. First, let us remember those who suffered but lived. Some who might continue to suffer. Let us call them to mind and name them out loud or type them in the chat. We're remembering Heather, murdered in a Charlottesville by a white supremacist. We're remembering the innocent people who are being affected by the virus because others don't know it's necessary to wear masks. We're remembering loved ones now gone in Soma, California. In silence, let us remember the people who died, the people we know and loved, and the people we did not know, but are our neighbors still. Let us call them to mind and name them out loud or type them in the chat. I'm remembering here. We're remembering the people who have lost their homes from floods and fire, and we might add hurricanes. And let us all say, we remember and we mourn. Let us remember all of the black people who have died at the hands of those entrusted with protecting them. Speak their names or type them in the chat and let us all say, we remember and we mourn. Let us remember all of the public servants, health care providers, police officers, firefighters, EMTs, first responders who have died during this pandemic. Speak their names or type them in the chat. And let us all say together, we remember and we mourn. in silence, in our mind's eye, let us remember all of the businesses that have closed, all the workers who are without income, all the people who struggle to support their families and even themselves. Let the images of the places and the people rise in our minds and in our hearts and let us name them out loud or type them in the chat. We're also remembering the little children who can't be with other children 
or if they do, they're faced with the dangers of the virus. We're remembering the mental health crisis unfolding in this country. We're remembering with the schools closed, how difficult it is for parents, for teachers, and for the children. And let us all say together, we remember and we mourn. In silence, let us be mindful of all the cracks in our democracy, all the threats to the American experiment. Let us especially be mindful of the ways the upcoming election can be undermined the ways some of our citizens voting is being restricted. Let us speak out loud all that we see or hear in our hearts and minds, or let us type it in the chat. We are mindful of the loss of wilderness and wildlife and the beauties of the planet due to overpopulation and exploitation and pollution. And we are mindful that there are people in, across our country who do not have the right to vote by mail. And some of them may find it difficult to have their voice be heard. And we say together, we remember and we mourn. In silence, let us be mindful of the frailty of our planet Earth and for the devastation to the lives of humans and creatures alike by wildfires and hurricanes, droughts, floods, and famine. Let us speak out loud all that we see or hear in our hearts and minds. And type it on the chat if you can't say it out loud. And let us all say together, we remember and we mourn. Shelter us beneath your wings, divine presence of the universe. Guide us from all harmful things. Keep us safe throughout the night until we wake in morning's light. Sustain us, heal us, strengthen us, lift us up and give us hope for the tomorrows to come. May all beings everywhere be happy and free. May the thoughts, words, and actions of our own lives contribute in some way to happiness and to healing and to the freedom for all beings. Oh God, hear our prayer and in your love answer. Amen. This concludes our service. Thank you, Pastor Bobby. That was really beautiful and so needed. I'm so honored to be here with all, you, all of you in this space together. Before we close, I wanted to just, we have optional unity circles, um, which are really a chance for us to come together in unity and in mourning um, 
and spend some time with, with people from all over and really just connect deeply during this time of great isolation. So Pastor Bobby is going to be leading those. I'm going to walk through some of those guidelines. Um, first, we, we want to continue to use the work we're doing, this platform, to help spark awareness of why it's so important to mourn. So if you feel so inclined and you'd like to take a picture of yourself with your candle and upload it to Instagram or social network of your choice and share a comment on what you're mourning and who you're honoring, um, that would be uh, really nice. And the hashtag here to be used is hashtag mourning into unity. So now on to the optional unity circle. So I really encourage you to stay if, if you're able. So how do unity circles work? Well, they're, first, they're small groups where everyone can connect and share. And so how do they work? The moderator is selected to keep the time in flow. And whoever has the brightest shirt is the moderator. And now there's no pressure. If you don't want to be the moderator, you can always pass. We want to practice, practice active listening. So one person answers the questions and then the next person, et cetera. We will broadcast cues so you know how much time you have remaining before we all meet back here in the main session um, before we say goodbye. And if you'd like to exchange contact information, if you meet somebody new and you, you'd like to do that, you can in the chat, there's no pressure. And if you have any problems, you can just exit the room and you'll be moved into the the main room where I guess I'll be and I can help you out. So simple guidelines, keep conversations confidential. You wanna share your story and not offer unsolicited advice or judgments. You always have a right to pass and just listen. And we wanna keep our responses short um, around three minutes so we can make space for everyone to share. Here are the questions for tonight. Name and location. Who or what are you mourning today? What came up for you during the ceremony? What does unity look or feel like to you? So I'll stop sharing so we, Pastor Bobby can create the rooms. And then I know the pastor wants to bounce in between rooms. So all of you will get a chance to, to have her. First off, I would like to thank everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? All right. So I want to thank everyone for coming out this evening. Uh, I want to show you that. Let me see. I think for that one, you need to start the video. <laughs> thank you. As so I'm twirling around. Mm -hmm. Now you can twirl around once you start the video. <laughs> There, I just wanted you to see that we're not oh, here alone. You don't see the video just yet. Oh, really? Now what's happening? Start video. There we go. Okay. Video. Now we can see. Okay. Can you see? Okay. There's one car leaving, but do you see that there are people here? Yeah. Amazing. Whoa. And there's beautiful light cars and the cars are driving by and it's chilly and cold, but it's so nice to be here in the church parking lot. <laughs> and I, I would like to thank all of support and um, those of you who are here and those are you who are around the country helping us do this really important work. And uh, I look forward to bouncing around and saying hello to each group that is in the breakout rooms. So thank you for being here tonight and for acknowledging our grief so, so that collectively we can move on for healing together. Thank you. So Pastor, you'll, are you able to create the breakout rooms? I created a room. There's not that many people. There's four people in there. So, and and Pastor, you were um, invited to it. Okay, great. I will go in there. Mm -hmm. uh, 
I'm going to stop recording, I think.